Hi, I'm Kaylee, and today I'm going to tell you my five favorite Dickens novels. In case you didn't know, Books from K's is a charity that donates books to missionary kids. If you want to donate to the kids, you can donate safely at GoFundMe.com. There's a link down in the description, there's a card right up here, and a button at the end of this video where you can donate to the kids. And believe me, we really need donations. These are kids that do not have access to libraries or bookstores, and we send them some books. So every donation is very much appreciated. And don't forget to click on that subscribe button and on the little bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video. So if you've been watching my videos or following me on Goodreads, then you know that it has been my goal for quite some time, well, you know, for a couple of decades, um, to finish reading all of Dickens. And I finally finished it just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I finally accomplished that goal and oh my goodness, it feels so good. <laughs> So, of course, now that I have read all of Dickens, I can sit down and say, these are my five favorite. So, I'm going to start off with an honorable mention that did not quite make the top five, but is still a forever favorite. And that is Our Mutual Friend. This follows John Harmon and Bella Wilfer as they, well, fall in love, obviously. You can't have a Dickens novel without somebody falling in love. But there's this inheritance, and there's a lot of money being thrown around, and who's supposed to get the inheritance, and there's lots of mystery. It's a good one. Number five is Martin Chuzzlewit. Old Martin Chuzzlewit has disowned his only son, young Martin Chuzzlewit, and uh, young Martin runs off to America to make his fortune. Of course, leaving behind the girl he loves. <laughs> because there has to be a love story somewhere. The main reason that I love, love, love this book is the incredible character development of young Martin. In the beginning, I hated young Martin. He is a jerk. And by the end, it was like, oh, nobody touched my young Martin. He's my sweetheart, you know? Um, I completely fell in love with him. He has this amazing redemption arc. I mean, the character development I have never in my life read a book with this kind of character development. It is just incredible to follow this character through every step of the way as he literally changes his life. So good. Number four is Dombey and Son. This follows a Mr. Dombey who is a terrible parent to his one son and his lovely daughter. The reason why I love this uh, first of all is because one of my heroes is Walter Gay, who of course falls in love with the daughter and uh, he's just, oh, he's such a good hero. He just jumps in and saves the day and all kinds of wonderful stuff. But the main, main reason why I love this is the lovely sibling relationship between the brother and sister, the, you know, children of Mr. Dombey. It's just, oh, it's such a beautiful story and it's sad and bittersweet and heartbreaking, and I just love that sibling relationship, though, how close those two are. I think that is my favorite part of Dombey and Son. Number three is such a favorite that I actually have two copies. It's A Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> there is a reason why this is one of the most famous books that Dickens ever wrote. It is incredible. It is set during the French Revolution and there are people being beheaded right and left. And there is a poor prisoner uh, who is released from prison and his lovely daughter, <laughs> who of course falls in love with the hero of the story. <laughs> but the reason why people really love this one, I think, is the bittersweet ending. I cried buckets and buckets at the ending. And if you know this ending, then you know. Oh my goodness, it is so heart-wrenching. Oh, it's just such a full, rich story, and I can never get over Tale of Two Cities. Forever heartbroken. <laughs> it's so wonderful. The number two slot goes to Bleak House, and the main reason for this is the main character, Esther Summerson. Esther goes through just terrible heartbreak and illness 
and just awful circumstances, she is pretty much rescued by these lovely friends and she just sets up this lovely life for herself but continues to just, just, just drama. There just seems like everything always goes wrong for Esther, poor Esther. And through it all, she is so resilient. She is so loving despite all the disappointments and you know just terrible situations in her life. She is so kind and loving and and not in a like, oh, she's an angel kind of way, but in a, a really relatable way. And besides Esther, there is just so much fantastic mystery and humor and a very complex plot like, you know, we're always looking for from Dickens. The second thing that I really love about Bleak House is Mr. Bucket. <laughs> he is a detective, one of the first detectives ever written in uh, British fiction. And oh my goodness, Mr. Bucket, in the beginning, I was like, I don't know about this guy. I'm not so sure if I like this person. And by the end, I was like, yes, Mr. Bucket. Oh, I love him. I love him so much. Um, I can't even tell you. I cannot even explain. If you've read it, you know, Mr. Bucket. We love Mr. Bucket. <laughs> oh, Bleak House. I just love it. I love it so much. I'm actually tearing up just thinking about it. Uh, there are tears in my eyes because I love it so much. <laughs> Okay, I have to pull myself together to tell you about the number one favorite Dickens forever, forever. And incidentally, this is one of the first Dickens, this is maybe the third or fourth Dickens novel that I ever read, you know, back 15 years ago or something when I really first started getting into Dickens. And despite all the other Dickens that I have read, this one has remained my forever favorite. It is. David Copperfield. It's kind of funny because David Copperfield is one of those you either really love it or you're really bored by it. Tons of people have told me, oh, you like David Copperfield? It's so boring. You know, and I, I really can't hardly even explain to you why I love David Copperfield so much. I just know that I do. <laughs> For one thing, it is one of the very few Dickens I think the only one that I can think of that is told in first person. It is narrated by David Copperfield himself telling you about his life. So that alone makes it stand out among Dickens's books. Another reason why I really love it, 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 it has a much broader scope of life than a lot of Dickens' other novels. This follows young David from the time he was born uh, through his childhood, through his school days, um, through his young adulthood, uh, kind of setting him up in a career, and then finally with his marriage. And it really goes through just this massive scope of his life. And there are very few other Dickens novels that follow such a broad spectrum of time. So I guess I really love it because it's more of a coming of age story. Um, and I, I can't think of any others that are quite, I mean, Oliver Twist maybe, but at the end of Oliver Twist, Oliver Twist is still a child. So not that one. Leave me a comment down below if you can think of more coming of age kind of stories in Dickens. This is the only one I can really think of that, that fits that description. This a book also has the worst villain, in my opinion, in all of Dickens. And Dickens is known for writing really creepy villains, like villains that will just make you go, Bleh! oh, they're so gross, and they're so nasty and evil, and you just cringe, like Dickens is known for writing really, really incredible villains. And Uriah Heep from David Copperfield, in my opinion, is the worst. I just want to vomit just saying the name Uriah Heep. Um, he is so slimy and he pretends to be your friend. He pretends to be really humble. And all the while behind the scenes, he is stealing and lying and he's just a creep. He just grosses me out. Oh, I hate him so much. I am getting emotional here, okay? <laughs> There are also a ton of humorous, quirky, 
weird characters in David Copperfield, Mr. Micawber just makes me laugh my head off. Betsy Trotwood, uh, David Copperfield's aunt, is Betsy Trotwood, and she is just so strange. <laughs> like, she is just so weird, and she just says the craziest stuff, and I just, I just have to laugh. I mean, so much humor in this book. I pretty much just laugh my way through David Copperfield every time I read it. Of course, the main reason why I love David Copperfield is David himself. He is a fantastic hero, in my opinion. Some people say that he's boring, that he doesn't take enough action, but I feel like he just plays such a central role in everything that happens in the book. Um, he is foolish sometimes, he makes mistakes, but through every page, I am just cheering him on, wanting him to succeed. I could do a whole separate video on why I love David Copperfield. There are so many fantastic subplots, betrayal and love and marriage, and of course money, which is always a major theme. Um, there's a debtor's prison again. Uh, there's lots of debtor's prison in Dickens books. David Copperfield is also the book that is said to be most like an autobiography because so many of the elements in here are taken from Dickens's own life and his own childhood. So I don't know, maybe that's why I love it so much because it just rings so true because so many of the elements and the plot devices and, and different characters and things are true people and true things that happened in Dickens' actual life. Oh, David Copperfield. I just love it forever. <laughs> oh, I just love it so much, so much. I really need to reread this, like, today. <laughs> And there you have it. Those are my five favorite Dickens and an honorable mention. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite Dickens novel. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.